Hello everybody, welcome to Frustrating Review. <laughs> um, so some of you might have seen the reaction video, which is, al which is already out on the channel, the instant reaction, I was quite sweary, I was just literally five minutes after the match had finished, I filmed that. So I've calmed down, we're going to be having a look at an all-round perspective, going in through the lineups, the bit of a game about the self, and we'll hear from Rafa himself, we'll look at the league table, uh, Nottingham Forest and a couple of things on the channel as well. So let's kick in with it as we begin with reviews. Let's have a look at the lineup. So this is how Huddersfield line up, and we got ten out of eleven correct. The only one we didn't get uh, uh, right in the previews was Van La Parra came in for Casey Palmer. But apart from that, uh, we got it spot on. Apart from that, um, you know the play that the fullbacks are very very high on. Uh, Moy was instrumental today as well, and Bill and Satin, the likes of Kachunga, Van La Parra, and Ince, uh, caused Newcastle problems. Uh, Newcastle, on the other hand, uh, yeah, we got spot on. We got the personnel spot on, 11 out of 11, but we didn't get the positions right. Strange enough to see Chancellor Mbemba playing at left-back rather than Keew and Clark. It was Chris Natsu over on the right-hand side, and it was uh, Matt Ritchie who played left midfield. And we've seen Mikael Moreno come in to set midfield as well. Prez in the 10, Gale up top. Uh, Mankiw was playing right-back alongside Lascelles and Clark, as I've already mentioned. So the game itself, first off, it was... Um, it was predominantly dominated by Huddersfield. They got off to a great start the first 20, 25 minutes, uh, causing problems. Uh, the communication in Newcastle's back line with, uh, with Lascelles and Mankiw in particular was pretty poor. Newcastle then started to have a spell for up until the half-hour mark for about 5-10 minutes. We're keeping the ball. Um, earlier on in the game, earlier on, about 10 minutes earlier in the 16th minute, uh, we had... Basically, our only real threat of a chance where Perez picks the ball up my left, lays it off to Richie, who's coming in from the left flank. He side foot it with his right foot, and it's a great save by Lossell. So, apart from that, nil nil going to half time. Huddersfield had a couple of long range shots from from uh, Moy and Ince, but apart from that, they were probably slightly the better side. Second half, um, <laughs> the goal comes four minutes, forty nine minutes, and it's it's poor. It's absolutely shocking, marking again. Uh, when we do the analyst video, which will be um, tomorrow night, we'll, we'll be picking up the goal and we'll, we'll point out who's at fault as well. Now, my play is a 1 2, and it's easy for him. It's a, fa it's a fabulous finish. He puts a top corner. Rob Elliott kind of do nothing about it. But Mikel Moreno and Javier Manquillo, both of them sleeping. In particular, Moreno doesn't even run after him. I know Manquillo lets his man run, but at least Manquillo makes an effort. And, you know, it's the third three goals that we've conceded. Manquillo has been involved in all of them, not tracking his runner. I know that sounds very critical, but I would like to put it out there how, how blunt I am. He is at fault for all three goals that we've conceded this season. Yes, I can say against Spurs that John Joe Shelby was sent off and it made life difficult, but it's simple marking. It isn't like an error where he messes up, kicks in the air, or he doesn't. It's simple, basic defending marking, which you do day to day in training. You, you play a run to cross to it and you run, you get in front of him, but he hasn't done on any of those goals. And my, Moreno's at fault as well. Um, We've seen Gale come off only this week, a few couple of minutes later, which is a bit surprising. I think that's probably down to fitness, but we actually looked a lot better with Hosselu in that side because he was holding the ball up. We're getting a few more crosses in. Newcastle starting to have a lot more possession, but he was feeding off scraps. I know we've seen Diarme come on for Hayden later on. I can get why Rafa done that because he wants to see the midfield push further up, but we've seen Murphy come on later on for Prez, but I was really, really disappointed not to see Murphy come on. Um, so we got beat, you know, 1-0. And I just want to come back to that is the plan B. I know I've banged on about it all, all summers. Look, in, in pre-season, I'd like to say plan B because when we are getting beat, we need to see something different. Now, Rafa has touched upon this before and said, look at the personnel that he's got. I have to disagree with Rafa. He, he gets the majority stuff spot on, which he's a genius. He's fantastic. But we do really need, looking at it, we need a plan B. We need a chuck. Why can't we chuck Mitrovic on up, up front alongside Hoslu and start getting some crosses in the box? What's so difficult about that? You're already losing the game. Yes, we'll probably will be counter counterattacked against, but it's a risk you have to take. You may as well get beat two, three, four nil, then get beat one nil. Let's go for it, and you never know. We didn't see it all last season in the championship, and it's something that as Newcastle fans we're going to have to live with. Rafa's very stubborn; he will not, he will not change. He believes in the system, and rightly or wrongly, he will stick by that. Um, just touched upon a note early. But let's have a quick look at the league table. So Newcastle is 17th. If I offered you 17th right now, I think the majority would actually take that. But yeah, you can't read too much in the Premier League table at this present moment because it's a bit of a lie because teams are playing against higher-end teams. So after about 10 games, you probably know where you are. Um, 
So let let's speaking of Rafa, let's get a, let's get some reaction from Rafa Benitez. It was a great goal that won it for Huddersfield, but from your perspective, could more have been done to close them down in the build-up? Yeah, clearly. You talk about lessons. What lessons do you feel have to be learned, perhaps from today and last week also? I don't think so. This is a Premier League. You cannot make mistakes, and you have to take your chances if you have chances. So frustrating, isn't it? And we're still learning years right about it. Um, just quickly touch upon, just coming off that as well, we're in partnership with Betsafe as well. So in previews going forward, you'll see some offers with Betsafe as well. Um, so I'm absolutely delighted to do a partnership with them. They have an offer on if you deposit up to £30, so it can be 10 20 30 they'll double that for you. Uh, so it's really nice. Links are in the description below and we'll be promoting that in previews. And also if you want to buy a shirt, grab yourself a classic football shirt as well. They have some great offers on Newcastle shirts. Um, right, let's try and spin on the positive, I know I've been on a down and I ranted and raved on the previous video. Um, we've got Nottingham Forest in midweek, and I think it's a blessing in disguise that we've got Forest. We don't have to worry about the league, there'll be a lot of changes. We'll hopefully see some youngsters, the likes of El Marley and Finley and Barleza and Fernandez, hopefully coming in the match day squad. And you know, the lads will have freedom, they'll want to go out and press it's something different, it's less pressurized. We'll be collaborating with um, a Nottingham Forest channel as well, so do keep an eye out for that. But Going back to this as well, um, we do need more players coming in. We really, really do this week. It's going to be talked about all week again about transfers. And probably, I know we're sick of hearing about it, but until the transfer window closes, that's all we're going to hear about players being linked. Rafa not getting these players and Mike actually needs to put some money out because you can see on the two performances, I know the Spurs one was very spirited, but we lack we really lack going forward. Yes, you're always going to concede. We're promoted side. We're going to concede all the time. We're going to be we're going to be probably hammered some point four nil five nil some point in the season. But we need goals. Goals keep you up, and we're struggling big time. And if it hasn't got plan A, he hasn't got the players. Go out and get the players. Yes, it's easier said than done. We need players off the books, but you've got to look at now the board and the ownership. And with Rafa on this one, he needs players. This Rafa does not want to be in a relegation battle. He wins trophies. That's what he's good at. Um, right, anyways, let's turn this into a, a positive as well. We were on BT Sport on Saturday again, uh, hours again, and Will actually manage it on this time. He has, a, he has a clip. I think I'd have to pick Upton Park as my favourite away ground. Selhurst Park, that's always a good trip. My main favourite one has to be easily Griffith Park over at Brentford. Um, terrace ends, you've got to love a terrace end. Pub on every corner of the ground. And I love going to West Brom. There's something special about that place, a real football venue. Proper old school Crystal Palace. My favourite away ground as a Manchester United fan has to be Villa Park. I think we may have had more memories and more great moments at Villa Park than Aston Villa fans have had. Uh, as a Liverpool fan, I think Carroll Road, the home of Norwich, has got to be my favourite away ground. We just always do well there. Hopefully some away fans will pick this beautiful stadium, St James's Park. You've got to hand it to the Geordies, they're a passionate crowd, they know the football, they get behind the team. I love the fact that the ground's in the middle of the city so you can have some refreshments after. Uh, Wembley's going to be a fantastic away day for anyone that goes down there to play Tottenham um, and to go to the National Stadium and see our teams play, especially Newcastle, um, would be an absolutely fantastic experience. Brilliant, thanks for all of those. It's different for you three, you see, because you, you never used to go and watch the games like as an away supporter. St James's Park, the atmosphere is brilliant, but you're so high up, it right. takes you till about the 65th minute just to get your breath back. So at least we're getting the brand out there, at least, you know. But uh, I'm really frustrated, of course, you know. We'll get more reaction in the next day or two, and then we'll focus on Nottingham Forest. But we'd love to know what you think about it all. Um, the budget that we've got, who can we really get? Because this side needs, needs strengthen. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Let us know what you think. See you later. Bye-bye.